Hi, welcome back to UncoverFraud.com. My name is David Malamud, and I am a forensic accountant and fraud investigation expert. If you've been enjoying my videos, please don't forget to subscribe below, leave me some likes and some comments, and I look forward to getting back to you, all those comments that I get. Today, I want to speak to you about why a short seller thinks $11 billion Oatly is more overvalued than Beyond Meat. When it comes to food stocks, they're on a tear. It's hard to find two better examples than Swedish oat milk darling Oatly and plant-based protein leader Beyond Meat. Both have scored sizable market shares of emerging new corners of the food market and have landed soaring valuations as a result. But when you look at the stock charts, the similarities come to a hard stop. Oatly shares have crept up 15% since they began trading in June. Beyond shares have been on a roller coaster since going public in 2019, but have still more than doubled in value. Short interest in both reflected. Only 1% of shares are shorted, while Beyonds are the most shorted of the food business, hitting nearly a third of shares shorted earlier in 2021 and now settling at 16%. Oatly went public a month ago, and now investors are worried a crash could be coming. And now that one short seller, Spruce Point Capital, has gone public against Oatly, investors are left wondering if Oatly is on the precipice of a crash. Both Beyond Meat and Oatly are overvalued, says Ben Axler, founder and chief investment officer of Spruce Point. But Oatly, with 2020 sales of $420 million and a market capitalization of $11.6 billion, is the one now operating at the extreme. Beyond had 2020 revenue of $406 million and a market capitalization of $8.2 billion. Axler believes that Oatly is worse than Beyond Meat, zeroing in on gross margin that is far weaker than reported and the high cost of winning market share. Axler further accuses Oatly of obscuring what their true gross margin is. And how is this done? Point blank, Oatly puts outbound shipping costs under its selling, general, and administrative expenses instead of under its cost of goods sold, which is the food industry norm. If you normalize and reclassify these expenses, when you look at the cost of goods sold, you find that Oatly has pretty much the lowest gross margin of any public food company. That is part and parcel with their criticism that Oatly is as poorly planned as any public food company they could find. The suggested readjustment shaves off around 7 percentage points of Oatly's 2020 gross margins, which is 23.7% compared to the reported 30.1%. Axler also points to an increasing number of promotions and discounts it offers grocers, including offering free shipping, rebates on extra pints of ice cream, and discounting newly launched yogurts for as low as $1.50 each. Axler says that the growth story is a little bit broken. The competition isn't going to sit around. If you are Chiobani, you try to thwart Oatly's expansion plans. And that is exactly what Axler and his team see happening. Axler is a former investment banker at Credit Suisse who started Spruce Point in 2009 amid the global financial crisis and had early success shorting US listed Chinese headquartered companies and holding activist interests in companies, including Build a Bear. He expects Oatly's average selling prices to go down over time, which will put even more pressure on profit margins. Oatly's response has been muted. The company has said it is aware that a short seller is making false and misleading claims regarding the company, and that this short seller stands to financially benefit from a decline in Oatly's stock price caused by these false allegations. Oatly rejects all these false claims by the short seller and stands behind all activities and financial reporting. 
Just to put things into perspective, let's compare Oatly and Beyond Meat numbers. In 2020, revenue was 420 million versus 406 million. The market cap, 11.6 billion versus 8.2 billion. The price to sales ratio, 28 times versus 20 times. The adjusted gross margins, 23.7% versus 28%. And a big indicator, the percent of shares shorted, 1% versus 16%. Spruce Point has requested an independent forensic accountant be hired to prepare a public report. In the aftermath of Spruce Point's investigation, at least five law firms announced that they had also started investigations into Oatly, mainly for securities violations. Spruce Point wants to be one of the first to put a strong sell on it and explain why. Where do we go from here? Point blank, Oatly has to show its financial results. And according to Axler, there's clear signs that the results are not going to match up with its high profit valuation. It always surprises me when short sellers analyze a company in question. Their methodology usually includes ratio analysis, talking to employees and former employees and customers. Without a doubt, Spruce Point has much to gain if their accusations are proven correct or even from the allegations themselves spooking investors. This year, we have seen other short sellers, including company Hindenburg, who accused electric vehicle companies Nikola and Lordstown Motors of inappropriate accounting and disclosures. Some may see short sellers as opportunists, but others see them as forensic investigators who perform speculative investigative work that if proven true, result in significant company profits. One thing to keep in mind is that short sellers have the incentive to reduce, if not obliterate, the stock price of a company they are short selling and reporting on. The more the stock price decreases, the more money they make. However, unlike short sellers, forensic accountants, based on the rules of independence, do not and cannot profit on whether the allegations are substantiated or not. Their responsibility is to report unbiased findings that can be supported in court. My recommendation is to keep in mind what motivates short sellers, but at the same time, do not discount what they report. Look into the information. See if what they said makes sense to you. See if you can look for other sources that support their allegations. And if you can't do the number crunching, have an accountant or somebody who is focused on financials look at the information for you. Again, my name is David Malamed, and I am a forensic accountant and fraud investigation expert. I've been doing this for over 20 years now, and I can tell you I'm always surprised by what it is that I find during the investigations that I've done. To find out more about me and the services we offer, please visit uncoverfraud.com. Don't be scared to reach out to me if you need any help or have any questions. And if you liked the video today, please don't forget to like it, subscribe, and leave me some comments. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you again. God bless.